Hi, everybody. Thanks for checking in with us for What a Week, another edition here with John Keller. I'm Chris McKinnon. Another busy week in has, politics. Has it been a week since we were sitting here? It feels like a year. Believe it or not. Well, maybe oh. the first one could have been almost a year ago, but that was the first one. <laughs> this was a long week. This was a Boy. very long week. All right, let's kick it off. Um, this, <coughs> excuse me. This week we had former special counsel Robert Mueller testifying yeah. in front of Congress, two congressional panels. Your takeaway on this, because it, it was something that was built up as it maybe something big was going to come out of it. Not a lot of bombshells at all out of it. It was way overhyped by the Democrats. And, you know, Mueller, Robert Mueller indicated in advance that he, A, didn't want to be there, mm. B, that he would show up and he would talk about what he found about President Trump and, and uh, potential obstruction of justice and so on, but he wasn't going to go beyond what was already in the report. And sure enough, that's exactly what happened, and it did not exactly make for riveting viewing. Um, Look, I think that, you know, the, the critics of President Trump have certainly come away with on-camera validation uh, of some of the facts involved here and an, an invalidation of the presidential spin that the Mueller report exonerated him. It didn't. Mueller made that clear. Um, however, uh, the Republicans had ample opportunity to spin their conspiracy theories about this. These were just a bunch of angry partisan Democrats right. with Mueller as this sort of uh, clueless figurehead. And they were able to do it essentially unrebutted uh, for hour upon hour. So I think the long-term political impact of this is a wash at best. If you're for impeachment, uh, last Wednesday was not a good day. All right, so let's also uh, talk about, um, as we shift gears, I know it's early, so that'll be the yeah. caveat. It's early it's in the early. presidential it's wicked race. Early. Right? It's wicked early. But a new Quinnipiac poll shows Joe Biden leading Trump significantly in Ohio among yeah. early voters there. The impact of this, because obviously we know, historically, Ohio is is kind of a must-win state in a lot of cases. Absolutely, and it was really the, the heart of Trump's upset victory yeah. last time around. The polls showed uh, Biden leading Trump, I believe it was eight points. Mm -hmm. uh, no other Democratic candidate managed more than a virtual tie right. with Trump in these uh, potential head-to-head matchups. And it's significant because it speaks to not just the core rationale for the Biden for president campaign, but really, as far as I can see so far, the only rationale is that he's the best choice to beat Trump. Uh, and, you know, that's been the argument all along, and this really reinforces that. Uh, it gives, I think, Biden a little bit of bragging rights going into the next round of debates, which will occur Tuesday and yep. Wednesday night. And, of course, we'll be here at 11 o'clock both those nights with recap and analysis of that. But, uh, you know, this is what the Biden campaign argument is. And we continue to see in polls that overwhelmingly this is the number one thing on the minds of Democrats. Who's best equipped to beat Trump? Right. And so that's the best news by the Biden campaign's had in a while, I'd we've say. We've seen a lot of polls come out poll after poll. We've seen a lot of the second, third, fourth, fifth place juggle around. Yeah. But Biden's been pretty significantly, uh, uh, consistently at the top of these polls since he entered his... Yes, his lead has shrunk, right. no question about it. And you've seen Kamala Harris after her debate encounter yep. with him. She rose up. And the others are within striking distance. But interestingly, Biden did, uh, that debate did not completely do in Biden by right. any means, as a, a lot of pundits suggested it would. I think that's notable as well, Chris. All right, back here at home. Um, yeah. Last week, we actually talked about this, the uh, upcoming RMV hearing and the Baker administration and uh, the transportation secretary and then the committees on Beacon Hill that wanted yeah. to look into this after that horrific accident up in New Hampshire that killed seven motorcyclists. We had this hearing set to go, yeah. and it was kind of a spectacle that we don't usually see in the public eye on Beacon Hill where a couple people refused to show up, and the heads, the co-chairs were saying, What's going on? No one showed up. They had had the legislators had asked for seven key figures in the whole affair, including the individual who oversees the part of yep. the RMV that's responsible for processing these license suspensions and making sure that people whose license has been suspended aren't aren't out there on the road. Uh, the former registrar who resigned almost immediately yeah. in the wake of the scandal, she was supposed to be there and didn't show. And the legislatures were, can I say, pissed? Yeah, I we're on the internet. Can, yeah. yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, they were pissed, and I don't blame them. And uh, Secretary Pollack was left holding the bag, talking about, well, we hired an outside firm right. to do an audit, and we don't want to compromise that. Come on, an audit is not a, a criminal probe or a grand jury investigation. Right. There's no reason. And the legislators pointed out quite accurately that they're a co-equal branch of government. They have every right to be looking into this and asking questions. So this is bad news for the Baker administration. Mm -hmm. I'll remind you once again, Charlie Baker, when he ran for governor the first time, um, made reforming the registry so almost like his number one issue, talked about it all the time. Right. He understands, quite rightly, the political volatility of the registry. Everyone has to interact with it. Everyone dreads it. Give them a good experience, they're going to go home singing your praises. Give them a nightmare experience or collapse on the job like the registry just did, and you're the one living through the political nightmare. The Baker administration is, is in the middle of a nightmare right now. They better fix it quick. I was going to say, what do you think happens moving forward? Because the uh, committee wants to hold another hearing next week on this. Do you think they show? What do you, I mean, what does the Baker's administration play at this point? I, I really don't think there's an argument for not having them show up uh, unless they can work with the committee chairs to sort of cut a deal got and it. kind of lower the temperature fine but no they they, they got to show and they got to answer questions the public demands answers and just saying oh we hired a firm they're they're going to take a month or so to, to right. figure that no that's not good enough all right sounds good and we'll be here next week it's going to be another busy week so we got to get our rest this week <laughs> like i always say as long as we don't run out of beer i'm going to be okay all right sounds good john thank you very much right. and as always thanks for checking in with us we appreciate it we'll see you next time on what a week